Hello everyone, my name is Anna Almeida. Uh, I'm from Pong Pesca, which is a platform of Portuguese NGOs working on fisheries and on other marine issues. Uh, and is made up of eight uh, NGOs. We decided to organize this cycle of uh, webinars about uh, EMFF, about the next, the next cycle of EMFF 2021-2027, since it's now being discussed at European level and it's, uh, it's a very important topic. So we thought it would be good to raise some discussion at national level and uh, bringing on some different uh, stakeholders. Um, so today it's our first webinar and we have with us Elisa Roller. Thank you very much for being here with us, Elisa. Elisa is head of unit at uh, DG Mare at the European Commission. She will uh, give a short uh, medium presentation and afterwards uh, she, will answer, answer, she will try to answer all your questions. So uh, we hope that, tec that technology helps us and everything goes uh, right. But just to inform all the participants, you will not be allowed to speak or to turn on your micro or your camera. So please write your questions on the icon key and a questions and answers. And uh, Punk Peshka, me and the other Anna, we will organize the questions by subject. And after the presentation, we will address the questions to Elisa. And we will see which subjects people are most interested to listen. Uh, this webinar is the first of this cycle. So it will be, uh, today is the first one, but every week we will have a, a new speaker. So please register for the next ones. Um, we will uh, probably share with you the presentation after the seminar, if it's okay if we, uh, with you, Elisa, to share of with course, the Of course, of course. So we will share the presentation with you. Uh, any question that we don't have time to answer, you can still send it to us, to Pong Peshka, and then we'll try to, to see if Elisa can answer or something like that. Um, and I think it's, uh, that's it. Uh, we will be finished at uh, 3 p.m. So thank you, uh, thank you very much for everyone that is listening now. Welcome to this first webinar. Thank you, Elisa, for being here. And uh, you can start whenever you want. Yeah, I'm going to, thank you, and I'm going to share my screen with the presentation, okay? Is, is that okay, Elisa? Absolutely. Anytime thank you, you very much. Me, yeah, anytime you want me to change um, the slide, please just let me know, okay? Okay, I'll just say the word slide if that's okay. Perfect, that's okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and um, thank you for having me. It feels very strange just to speak into the camera and not know who's on the other side of my audience. Um, it's uh, quite unusual to uh, speak at a conference in that way. Um, but these are strange times and they require us to uh, take new measures. Uh, and I hope you are all staying safe and uh, that you and your families are well. Uh, we are continuing to work in the Commission, uh, both on uh, the emergency response to uh, the crisis, and I might say a few words about that at the end of my presentation. Uh, but I've been asked to focus primarily on uh, where we are with the post-2020 European Maritime and Fisheries Fund and what are some of the uh, main discussion elements that we're having now with the Parliament and the Council. So let me first do a very brief presentation and overview of the fund and uh, what the Commission's proposal was all about. Uh, Anna, if we can have the next slide, please. So uh, the Commission, the next one, sorry. Uh, the Commission proposed uh, its proposal uh, just under two years ago. And the aim was to, in, in line with what we have in the current period, uh, to focus both on the one side on the objectives of the common fisheries policy, but also uh, the objectives of EU maritime policy. And as such, there are four main priorities in the uh, proposal for the Commission. Uh, we have a budget proposal of 6.14 billion, uh, which is a small reduction compared to the current period, uh, primarily because of Brexit. So most of the EU funds have a similar reduction. 
Of that amount, uh, 86.5 is under shared management. So this is the, the funding that we share through uh, with member states. So uh, at national programs which are co-financed with the member states and the rest uh, was going to be under direct management. So money that is managed directly by the commission, which is uh, mostly our voluntary contributions to uh, uh, international organizations. Uh, it's also the money that we spend on data collection um, and scientific advice. It's the money that we spend on uh, control issues. So, uh, and then obviously everything that comes under the blue economy and, and maritime policy. Next slide, please. Just to give you a quick glance, um, so the, the EMFF is, is part of a complex onion where you have obviously the EU budget, which obviously determines things, uh, the common provisions regulation, which is the regulation which uh, all of the funds in shared management um, uh, share. And then obviously we have secondary EMFF legislation and the national program. So this is a little bit what the legal framework looks like. Next slide, please. Um, the key elements, as I mentioned, of the Commission's proposal are uh, alignment, stronger alignment to CFP objectives, and I'll spend a few minutes on that a bit later, simplification and um, greater result orientation, because obviously what we want is to show uh, the value added of, of public investment. Next slide, please. I'm not going to go into this um, because I think it's a very, very uh, a complex slide, um, but it, it kind of uh, shows you a little bit uh, in one slide all the different types of investments that we can support through the EMFF. And I'd like to focus just on um, a few of them. Obviously, the main objective of the EMFF is to ensure that we have sustainable fisheries. Um, and that is through environmental, economic, and social sustainability, but in particular, the objectives of the CFP, which is achieving maximum sustainable yield for all stocks, uh, implementation of the landing obligation, and ensuring a balance between the fleet and the available resources. And I'll come back to this a little bit later because this is one of the main issues uh, with the Council and, and, and Parliament. What we think that EU public money should support is uh, uh, areas where there is an added value for EU, for EU funding. So, for example, scientific knowledge on fish stocks and the marine ecosystem, uh, biodiversity conservation, innovation in terms of finding new selective fishing techniques, uh, fisheries monitoring technology. Uh, so the aim really for the fund is to find the best way, the best added value for EU investment. So where is it that the EU should be investing? Where local, regional, national authorities um, can't, can't invest? And this is precisely why our, the value added of this pu public investment is all about ensuring that the EMFF generates collective benefits. And the collective benefits for us is obviously um, uh, restoring the marine ecosystem, uh, um, you know, minimizing the negative impact on uh, fisheries on the ecosystem, and but also ensuring that we have uh, the right conditions in place for sustainable private businesses uh, in the fisheries and, and obviously aquaculture sectors. What are the risks if the money is spent badly? First of all, and, and I'll spend some time on this a bit later as well, our view is that harmful subsidies and um, contribute to overfishing and overcapacity. This is something where we have been uh, we have been saying this consistently since 2002, which is when the reform of the common fisheries policy meant an end to harmful subsidies. Um, the second thing is uh, subsidy dependency. We want to ensure that with the fund we don't create a situation of subsidy dependency. Um, we also want to generate private benefits rather than, uh, we want to ensure that we uh, contribute to policy objectives rather than um, generating private benefits. Um, so those are all the risks when public money is spent badly. And this is why the Commission has a proposal on the table which emphasizes uh, those investments that generate collective benefits. 
um, and that are about ensuring that we uh, achieve the objectives of the policy. Next slide, please. Again, this shows you a little bit where under the different objectives of the common fisheries policy, social, economic, and environmental, um, where, what, where the EMFF invests. Um, for example, one of the criticisms that we've been getting um, in, and I'll come back to this later, is that we don't invest enough in social part of the policy. Um, so one of the things that the parliament and the council have, are trying to introduce are amendments which would allow for um, uh, investments to modernize or renew the fleet um, in different ways. Uh, some are limited to small scale fisheries, others, uh, the council position is much more extensive. Um, and one of the reasons that uh, the parliament and the council give to us is they say, well, the EMFF also needs to be about ensuring the health, safety, and security of fishermen on board fishing vessels. Um, and what we've tried to do with this slide is to illustrate that actually the EMFF, both the current EMFF and the Commission's proposal for the future EMFF, are also about health, safety, and security. And so, for example, on the left side of the screen, you can see uh, that we invest in health, health, safety, hygiene, and working conditions on board, which we know are, are sometimes very difficult. We invest in human capital and skills, so the training of fishermen. In generational renewal, so we help uh, try to attract young people to the sector, which is, of course, uh, one of the main complaints of the fisheries sector. We don't have enough young people. They're not sufficiently attracted to the sector. Uh, it's about empowering women um, in the sector, uh, local communities, and obviously uh, small-scale uh, artisanal support for, for fishermen. So we also want to make sure that in our discussions with uh, member states, with the sector, with uh, the council and the parliament, um, the people are aware that our, the, the EMFF is not just about environmental um, sustainability, it's not just about economic competitiveness and innovation and ensuring that you know, the, the sector can compete, uh, but it's also about the social dimension of fisheries, which is very important. Next slide, please. I'm not gonna go into this, but it, it goes a little bit to explain what we have in each priority. So you can see for each priority within the EMFF, which is under shared management, and what is under direct. I kind of gave you a summary at the very beginning, so we'll skip this slide and we'll skip, I think, the next one as well. Yes, um, so maybe you can skip the next two slides, Anna. Yep, and we can go on to, yeah. So what are some of the key topics and some of the key highlights? Um, the first thing, and this is a major change from the, the past, is that we uh, are giving preferential support to small-scale coastal fishing. So that is vessels underneath 12 meters not using towed gears, which make up more than 85%, uh, sorry, 75% of the European fleet with 100% aid intensity rate um, and uh, strategic national action plans uh, where we have reserved investments. So the aim is really to say, look, we know that the small scale coastal fishing fleet is the one that is in most difficulty and where the most amount of public support is needed. What we're seeing is for different reasons that over the years, uh, the small scale uh, fishing fleet has uh, little access to the funds and there are various reasons for that. Uh, so we have tried to introduce a number of preferential conditions. They exist now as well, but we've extended those conditions. Um, the second is to try to have a much more strategic approach for the outermost regions. And I know that this for Portugal is quite important with Azores and, and Madeira. So uh, not just to have a ring-fenced allocation uh, with a maximum of 50% for the compensation of additional costs, but also to have a strategic action plan for each outermost region. Um, that was also part of our proposal. Then we will continue to ring fence the amount of money for fisheries control and scientific data collection. What does this mean? It means that this money must be spent on scientific advice and uh, data collection. 
uh, sorry, uh, fisheries control and, and data collection. So this is very, very important to our policy. We also gave preferential support rates for important challenges like the implementation of the landing obligation, as well as health, um, safety, and working conditions on, on board. So we also have a number of fleet subsidies. So things like extraordinary cessation, permanent cessation, uh, engine replacement, startup support, where we uh, have conditions, uh, we have introduced conditions to avoid um, harmful uh, effects. Next slide, please. I won't go here. This is more for uh, on the management and delivery side. So we skip this slide. Uh, we skip this slide as well. Uh, this is more about the programming side. Okay, and we'll move into the key topics that we are going on for the negotiations. So next slide. The, where we are at the moment is that we're in trilogues. So we started these trilogues in November 2019. Uh, we've had three trilogues so far. We were supposed to have a trilogue next week, but obviously that has been, um, for as far as we know, it has been canceled. Um, so we are at the moment waiting to hear from Council and Parliament when the trilogues will resume. Obviously, the situation is much more complicated now because uh, we are working in a crisis situation. So we still need to wait for the agreement on the budget. Uh, and uh, once we have the agreement of the budget, then we can also proceed with and finalize the discussions on the EMFF as well as all EU funding such as LIFE, uh, such as the European Regional and Development Fund, the Cohesion Fund, the Social Fund. So all EU funding programs are very much dependent on an agreement on the budget. But normally speaking, the new programming period should start on the 1st of January of next year. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are the key topics? Uh, I've met, been mentioning them throughout my presentation, um, but the most important one probably is uh, fleet subsidies. Uh, as you know, we have a commitment under uh, UN Sustainable Goal uh, uh, 14, uh, which is to eliminate subsidies which contribute to overcapacity and overfishing. Um, at the same time, there are discussions going on in the WTO uh, with uh, a view to reaching an agreement later this year. It was supposed to be in June, but um, I've just been seeing some exchanges which are suggesting that the ministerial in June may be postponed as well. So we're looking at end of the year, uh, potentially at this point, uh, although that's to be confirmed, um, for an agreement also on the WTO on eliminating subsidies which contribute to overcapacity and, and overfishing. Um, what we have said, and uh, we have said this to our third country partners, our WTO partners, we have said this to Council and Parliament, the Commission's proposal for the post-2020 EMFF is clean. It's clean in the sense that it does what it's supposed to do, which is it's a commitment to eliminate subsidies which contribute to overcapacity and overfishing. Um, and we are concerned by the fact that both the Council and the Parliament in their respective positions that they adopted last year have introduced a number of uh, uh, harmful subsidies, what we view as harmful subsidies. Um, so we do not feel that um, the position of the co-legislators with regards to construction and renewal of fishing vessels is consistent with SDG 14. We also feel that the amendments that the co-legislators have put in uh, on, um, uh, on uh, uh, for example, startup support for young fishermen uh, and engine replacement are consistent with, uh, with, with, the, with those commitments that we have with regards to the SDG 14. So we have been saying this over and over and over again. Um, we are now at the point where uh, we need to see how they respond to us because we've been saying this really from the start. Um, we now have a new parliament in place where since last year's elections, obviously sustainability is a priority. We have the Green Deal. We have the new biodiversity strategy coming um, in, a few, uh, in a few weeks. 
Uh, and all of those things mean that the, the green sustainability agenda is much more at the forefront of things than it was six months ago, a year ago. Um, so we really need to ensure that um, both the co-legislators are aware of, of the fact that, that you know, these things are happening. Um, and the commission at the, at the last um, trilogue uh, made it clear to the co-legislators and has been saying this since the beginning that we, we really are not happy with the way um, the discussions are, are evolving in, in this situation. It's really too early to say where things will go. Like, as I said, we've only had three trilogues and we actually have only had one discussion on this so far. So, I mean, this could still take uh, some time. Next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the proposal is in line with the CFP and Sustainable Development Goal 14. Um, we'll move on to the next slide because I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, and that's really the that's really the end of the the, the presentation. Um, I I, I want to spend just a, maybe one minute just to let you know what's been happening the last couple of weeks um, where where we are. Um, this afternoon there was a there is a, a meeting between uh, my commissioner Commissioner Sinkavichis with uh, the fisheries ministers where he has uh, informed them of some of the main responses that, of the commission to the crisis. So the first thing that we have introduced is a package of measures two weeks ago, uh, which would uh, free up some money within the fund. So to allow member states to move money across uh, different priorities uh, to help specifically the aquaculture sector uh, with uh, stock insurance and for fisheries uh, to allow fishermen to benefit from mutual funds. So uh, kind of an insured scheme, uh, which would be triggered in cases of public health crisis like uh, the coronavirus. Um, the second thing that we have done is last week, uh, the commission issued a temporary state aid package in which the state aid de minimis uh, support that member states can give uh, for fisheries has increased from uh, 30,000 euros to 120,000 euros. This is a temporary state aid package, so it's only there until the end of the year, um, but it, it is designed to, to, help, uh, uh, to help member states. The third thing that we have done is that we've issued a fact sheet, information sheet to member states to show them what possibilities are available within the EMFF for them to, um, to uh, utilize the funds to the best way possible to alleviate the impact of, of the crisis. Um, so those are some of the, so, some of the things that we, uh, we have seen. We are very, very concerned about the impact of the coronavirus uh, and the crisis on the sector. Um, as you know, because of the quarantine situation, uh, hotels, restaurants, uh, are closed and uh, the demand for seafood is collapsing everywhere. So uh, the, the demand for fresh fish. So we are seeing a, a huge effect, ripple effect on the, on the sector, um, not just fisheries, but also aquaculture. So we are now very busy in the commission trying to see how we respond to that and what we can do, knowing that obviously our, you know, our, our hands are tied with regards to the budget and, um, and the possibilities, um, but we are looking into different ways in which uh, we can support the sector. And with that, I think I have bored you enough. I've spoken for, uh, for 20 minutes, so uh, I'll uh, stop there. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, I think it was really good and uh, short and um, concise, I'd let's say like this, because this is a very complex file. So I think you did a really good job at, at putting everything together in a very short time. Uh, so as Anna said previously, we are going to accept questions. We already have one, two, three, four, four questions, but you can use your icon of the q and I think you can, everybody can see the Q&A um, icon and you can type your, your, your question there. Um, we have more or less 30, 35 minutes until uh, the end. And um, I can see some people are raising hands. Um, we are not allowing anybody to, to, to speak. I am sorry, but it's a lot of people and we could not have everybody um, 
chipping in at the same time. So please do feel invited to, um, to make your comments or your question on the Q&A box. So I think we can, we can move with the, with the first question we have here. I'm not sure if you can see it, Elisa, but I can tell you what it is. Uh, it's from, from João Rodrigues, thank you very much. And he's asking which amount of the MFF is intended to be allocated to the social dimension of fisheries, and then he completes with, and to the environmental and economic dimensions as well. Okay, uh, thanks Joel for the question. I'm gonna take the first two questions um, as, a, as a group. Um, well, the way it works, uh, we don't allocate money to uh, the social or environmental or economic dimensions. What we have is the possibility for member states uh, on the basis of their own needs. So they do a SWOT analysis. So they uh, do an evaluation from the start. Where is it that we need to spend um, most, of our, uh, most of the funding? So we give them an allocation. There are certain amounts that are ring fenced. So for example, they must spend a certain amount on data collection and, and control. Uh, but the rest is really up to the member state to decide, well, I want to spend this much on the social dimension and this much on, on the economic side of things, uh, this much on environmental. And so what you see is very different types of programs. Uh, so for example, um, uh, we have member states where uh, fisheries, pure fishery subsidies to the fleet are very, very minimal and they tend to spend a lot of money uh, across the board uh, on different things. So um, it's, it really depends on the member state and how they want to do it. One of the things that we are doing is the commission uh, uh, it will be coming out and we were hoping to come out with it in April but I think that's going to be postponed now uh, with sea basin analysis so we are doing an analysis by sea basin of what we think the main priorities for the common fisheries policy are and where we would like to see member states around that sea basin spending the money on. So for example, for the Baltic Sea, we would ask the member states around the Baltic Sea to focus on restoring um, the marine ecosystem there and to address with issues of pollution and eutrophication and the quality of the water in the Baltic Sea, um, those types of things. So that's one way that, that we do it. Um, the second question you had, Joao, was what is the position of the Commission regarding EU fishing fleet fishing in the high seas? Um, I, I think I might need a more precise question from you there. Um, obviously, the EMFF supports the entire fisheries sector, but it's up to member states to decide how they're going to use the, the EMFF. If, that, if the question is about funding, um, that's my answer. But if you have a more specific question, uh, let me know. Then I see a question from Marc-Philippe Bouchard. Hi, Marc-Philippe. Hi, hi. Um, and will the state aid package be loans or grants to fisheries and aquaculture's producers? That's a very good question. It's up to the member state. So some member states can give grants. Um, some member states uh, uh, will do it through the form of loan, uh, loans or other types of financial instruments. So far, and I'm this is based on yesterday's information. We've had one notification so far. So Germany has already said that they want to do uh, a state aid package for fisheries and aquaculture producers. Um, and then it's usually up to the member state to decide, am I going to channel this through banks and financial institutions, or am I going to give out sta straight grants? Then another question um, from Joao. Yes. Do we know how much funding each member state will get from the EMFF 2021-2027? Yes, absolutely. It's in the annex of uh, the proposal uh, that the Commission put on the table two years ago. So there you can see the amount of money that we are proposing for every member state to get. Um, overall, it's a 6% decrease. And of course, the, those amounts are for the moment just theoretical amounts because we need to agree on the EU budget as a whole. So obviously, if, if the Council, the European Council, decide that there's going to be a decrease in the EU budget, then there will be a corresponding decrease uh, for the fisheries fund uh, as well. Uh, Paula, good afternoon, Paula. You are from a flag, yay, fisheries local action group from the Alentejo. Okay, and I did note saw in the presentation any reference on the budget and strategic measures about the subject. Absolutely, we want CLLD to continue. Yes, fisheries local action groups. 
we want to continue it. And absolutely, uh, the idea is that we very much want member states to continue to spend um, uh, the EMFF through CLLD. In the current period, it's about 10%, but um, uh, we do know that a couple of member states, mostly in Northern Europe, who have very small fisheries allocations are co uh, considering dropping it, um, which would be a shame because we really think that uh, CLLD is absolutely the best way to have bottom up approaches to big challenges that face us as, as all. Ines, Elisa has said that the demand for seafood is collapsing and because of, do you have data on this? Um, well, it's kind of difficult to, to have much data. I just saw our economic analysis unit has produced a first report on, um, on uh, the, the, the impact of the crisis. Um, so what we're looking at now is uh, the prices in the market where you can kind of get a, an indication um, of how the sector is doing and the prices have decreased quite a lot. But it could actually be that we see the prices increase because as the borders close, there's going to be a lot more restrictions on uh, the possibility for importing sea seafood. So we, for the moment, we're seeing a massive decrease in the price of seafood. Um, but from the report I was reading this morning um, that our economic analysis unit was, has produced, we could see as a result of both the EU's external borders closing and some member states closing their borders internally, we could see um, a rise in... Um, a rise in prices. Certainly what we're seeing, I don't know how the situation is in, in Portugal, but uh, the facts here in Northern Europe is that with the quarantine, uh, people can't leave their homes. And if they do, it's for very short periods of time to go to the supermarket and they're tending to buy pasta and rice and goods that can be stored for long periods of time. And they're not really buying fresh fish. Um, so that's also part of the reason why we're seeing an impact on um, on uh, uh, on the market. Um, I do think that there will be uh, a change in the way people consume seafood um, as a result. As, in fact, we think there'll be a way, a different way in which people shop completely. It's not just about seafood. Uh, I think we're going to see major changes to the market. And in fact, one of the things that we're working on together with our colleagues in, in agriculture um, uh, is uh, for, we were supposed to be coming out at the end of this month with a farm to fork strategy. So looking at sustainable food production systems across uh, Europe and the future of sustainable food production. And uh, the discussion that we've been having is that we're going to have to completely rethink the way we, we, we look at food, we buy food, we, we consume food. Um, so yeah, I do think there will be, but it's too early to really say what that impact is going to be. Okay, Catherine. Hi, Catherine from the Danish Society of Nature Conservation. We've had lots of discussions over the years about the EMFF, so it's really nice to see you. Uh, well, to see you virtually, I can't see your face, but I see your message. Uh, so hi, Catherine. Um, how will the Commission ensure that 30% of the EMFF is spent on measures supporting EU's climate, EU climate goals? A very good question. Uh, the way we do this is that when a member state submits their program, um, they have to show us um, how each of the measures that they are uh, proposing will contribute to our climate goals. And when we add up the amounts that they're allocating, it has to correspond to at least 30%. So um, that's the way that, that we do it. In also, uh, in the proposal, what we have is that for, uh, we, we, we have a list of indicators um, that is attached to um, the, the, the program statement, as, as, as it's called. And there it shows you where we think, which parts of the EMFF we feel can help to contribute to climate goals. But for every member state, we will ensure um, when we get the program that the 30% the uh, amount is, is, is respected. Uh, okay, good afternoon, Adriana. Research in Portugal fisheries is deficient. It should be targeted. Uh, we have a plan for data collection, but the sampling is not representative. Um, okay. 
There is not enough co-op management. Um, I think you're right. I think there is a lot of money available for research, but it's not always uh, going um, to the right types of projects or the information that we're getting from the projects isn't necessarily being aggregated in a way that, we, that it's meaningful. Um, and I, I have to agree with you. I mean, one of the things that we, um, you know, one of the files that I work on in my unit, we're also responsible for um, uh, the technical measures regulation, and we're also responsible for sensitive species. So my unit is responsible for the protection of eels, uh, sharks, and um, uh, uh, cetaceans. And, you know, we have been asking ISIS uh, for advice um, on cetaceans, and then you kind of get this half picture of where they think the problem is. And then when you ask them, well, can't you give us a much more complete picture? Well, the data is missing, or the research wasn't done the right way, or the sampling wasn't done. So I agree. I think we, we still have a, a long way to go um, in terms of ensuring that the money that we spend on research develops uh, generates the type of data and the type of scientific advice that we as fisheries managers in the commission uh, can use to, to the best way. Ah, Marc Philippe, I see you're asking another question. So how will the East European Commission ensure that the goal stated in the Green Deal will be met by member states in their financial support to fisheries and aquaculture producers due to the COVID-19 crisis? Um, well, first of all, the, the the Green Deal is the kind of overarching, you know, uh, ambition, strategic ambition that we have um, as, as the EU. So we want to go for a zero pollution strategy. We want to go for becoming carbon neutral. Uh, we have, uh, we want to uh, have a response, uh, be ambitious in terms of the protection of biodiversity, um, sustainable food production. So if the crisis hadn't happened, we would obviously be working on all those different, uh, different aspects. And one of the things that we would have ensured is um, that when the new programs start to arrive for 2021-2027, is that we look at each program for Portugal, for Spain, for, for France, for, uh, you know, Italy, for Sweden, and ensure that, you know, all those ambitions, whether it's, this, uh, you know, the 30% expenditure on climate change uh, objectives, all those things are incorporated into the, um, that the financing for it is, is there. Now, with the crisis, we, we have to see. I mean, at the moment, we're not thinking beyond the crisis. We're still in a crisis situation, so we're working on a day-by-day -day basis to alleviate, which is what is a massive public health crisis, and then we need to, to see what the impact is going to be on our, um, on our, uh, on our sector. And after that, we, we, we just need to see. It's really too early to, to, uh, to answer that um, question. Okay, Anna, Anna Ho from WWF. Good afternoon, Anna. Um, would you be able to briefly comment on the revised EU proposal to the WTO? Ah, the harmful subsidies in a green box. Ah, yeah, okay, can I comment on the, on the proposal? So the, the proposal, we revised our proposal uh, last year to the WTO um, in which we said, look, we are, we are not saying that all subsidies are bad, okay? Because we have a number of subsidies in the EU where we are proud of them. And for example, we heavily subsidize fisheries control. Without EU money on fisheries control, I don't know how much control there would be, let's be honest. We heavily subsidize data collection and research. Um, most of the marine institutes in Europe receive some form of EU um, funding. Um, we also subsidize um, uh, protection of the marine environment. So a lot of the projects involving fishermen and scientists and, you know, partnerships, that sort of thing, are about protecting the marine environment. So what we shouldn't do is to say that all subsidies are bad. And the way discussions were going in the WTO really seemed to indicate that there were some third countries who were saying, well, no, no, we don't want to have any subsidies for fisheries sector. We said, no, 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 no. We think that you can have subsidies to the fisheries sector 
um, provided that they don't contribute to overcapacity and over overfishing. And this is when the third country said, well, what will like tell us? So this is why we came up with this proposal, which we share with a few like-minded countries like Japan and South Korea, who also uh, give subsidies to their uh, fleets uh, to in, in what's the, the green box. So we don't think it, it's, um, we think it's a very uh, ambitious proposal because what we're saying here is we're excluding those harmful subsidies which contribute to overfishing and overcapacity. But here's a list of those subsidies which we think are actually beneficial. Okay, Mathieu. Um, Mathieu, is this Mathieu from Bloom? <laughs> yes. So. Yes, it is. Uh, hi, Mathieu. Uh, I hope you're well. Both Parliament and Council argue that there are no harmful subsidies in their position. They, they claim that tax and quotas and capacity entry. Ah, yeah. Okay, this is a very good question. Um, this is the, the, uh, the main argument that we've been seeing from both Council and Parliament. So Council and Parliament say that what they argue is that their position is in line with um, SDG 14, because they are saying that we don't, we don't believe in harmful subsidies. And what we're saying is that for health and safety reasons, we should be able to modernize and renew vessels. Um, and that it's, uh, it's okay to increase capacity provided that you have um, a tax and quota system in place. So they're saying it doesn't, you, you, even if you increase the capacity of a fishing vessel to accommodate it for health and safety reasons, it will not have a negative impact uh, on uh, sustainable fishing uh, because we have a tack and quota system. That's very true. Um, you have a tack and quota system in uh, much of the Northeast Atlantic, but you don't have a tack and quota system in the Mediterranean or in the Black Sea. And not all species are covered by, um, uh, by tax and quotas. For us, it's very, very simple. If you build a new vessel, you d'office, de facto, you increase the capacity. Because even if you have a very well-functioning tax and quota system, the fact is you can store more fish on board. You can go faster to the fishing grounds to catch the fish. So, you know, technology has increased as it grows spectacularly, and it is the it's you know, technology means that fishing vessels can fish better, faster, and much more efficient than they did before. Um, so, uh, we need to make sure that our fishing sector is safe, that they have the healthy, uh, that they are healthy, that they have the safe working conditions on board, but we don't think that you need to have public money to invest in new vessels. The sector up until now, and let's see with the crisis, but the sector has been very profitable in the past. So if private owners of private vessels want to spend their private money to build you know, new vessels, that's fine. They absolutely can do that but let's not spend EU money on this. Um, that's our view on this. Okay, hola Ignacio, que tal? Eh, buenas tardes, nice to see Ignacio again. I don't see Ignacio, but I see his message. Um, yes, thank you very much for the uh, statement um, that was uh, sent. Um, we, um, uh, obviously, now, as I mentioned before, the WTO discussions, we don't know how quickly they will unfold. Um, it's, uh, it's difficult to say. The indications I, I saw uh, this morning, yesterday, were that there's, they're considering to postpone the ministerial, but there's no confirmation of that. Um, uh, I don't agree with your last question. Is the EU trying to maintain uh, potential overfishing subsidies in the EMFF as most of its stocks are in theory managed? No, what the proposal says is that um, subsidies that contribute to overfishing and overcapacity are prohibited. Um, but the subsidies that you can find in the green box, in the famous green box that we, I would just mention, um, those provided that you have a system 
that is based on um, well-managed stocks with a data collection, scientific research, uh, fisheries control, those subsidies should be allowed. So that is the principle behind the green box. We're still saying that we think that all subsidies, harmful subsidies should be banned, but we have proposed a list of um, green subsidies that we think um, are actually quite beneficial uh, to the sector and to sustainability. Uh, hello, Pedro. Um, okay, uh, your question is about uh, small-scale fisheries, uh, a priority in terms of increasing scientific knowledge and sustainability. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a priority in scientific knowledge. Um, we uh, obviously, uh, it, I think it depends. Um, for us as fisheries managers, we need to have scientific advice on all fish stocks as far as possible. But obviously, uh, we don't always have a full picture uh, of, of everything that is going on. Um, and obviously, at EU level, we take fisheries management decisions uh, on a limited scale. For example, we have the TAC and quota system in the Northeast Atlantic, so we set uh, fishing opportunities every year. Uh, we have effort regimes, for example, in the Mediterranean, uh, where we uh, need to have scientific advice. Um, we have, uh, uh, but also member states need to have this information, you know, for uh, national measures that they want to make uh, put into place. Um, so it's important that uh, you know, all member states identify which um, areas with regards to conservation and um, fisheries are of their of, of importance to them and that they can allocate the right uh, opportunities. Um, okay, Joao, uh, you, okay, thank you for rephrasing your question. So your question about the high seas is related with the fact that fishing in the high seas is mainly open access and some of the EU fleet receives subsidies directly or indirectly to fish there, which do not align with sustainability objectives. Actually, that's a very good question. Um, this was something that we were asked by our third country partners uh, in the D WTO discussions. Well, you know, where does the EU give its subsidies? Because every year we do a notification to the WTO of where our subsidies go to. Um, and we were asked specifically, I think it was last year, um, uh, where those, those subsidies uh, go to. We do, um, uh, when, when we looked at, this, at the breakdown, and I don't have the figures with me, so I, I can't quote them reliably, but when we looked at the breakdown of the figures, uh, most of the money, or disproportionately, a lot of the money goes to the large fleet. So the over 12 meter fleet. Um, so uh, it, it does mean, and this is something I mentioned in my presentation, that the small scale fisheries fleet in Europe uh, disproportionately does not get a lot of funding compared to the larger, larger fleet. However, when we broke it down and we looked at fishing in the high seas, very few vessels actually got subsidies there. So um, it's, um, this was something that we can, uh, we, uh, that when we discussed this with our um, third country partners, we, we could say with, with, a, with a fair level of certainty. So disproportionately, yes, the large scale fisheries fleet gets more money than the small scale fleet, but not those vessels fishing in the high seas. I hope that helps to answer your question. Vanda, good afternoon. I am happy for the investment on women empowerment in fisheries as a statement. What are your thoughts on this subject? Well, you know, girl power all the way. Um, uh, I, you know, I think we're one of the few funds, I mean, okay, the European Social Fund, but we are one of the few funds where uh, we really have seen a huge progression over the last few years in terms of um, uh, the, the role of the woman in the, in the sector. And um, uh, we've seen a number of really interesting projects, whether it's through our flags, through community-led local development, but also on other types of projects uh, in terms of involving women in the uh, supply chain and in the marketing and in training. Um, so when you go to conferences and events and uh, with the sector, you see many, many more women um, uh, 
you know, uh, involved. Uh, the commissioner also sent a, a video statement. Previous commissioner Vela uh, sent a video statement to a big international conference on women in fisheries, uh, which was held in Galicia uh, last year. Uh, so we are seeing um, much more importance uh, given to that, both at the level of funding, but I think also within the policy itself. And that's where I think that, that the social dimension of the policy is important. Hi, Catherine, again. Um, you have a follow-up question. Very good. There's quite a lot of member states that the best way to spend EMFF money, that fuel efficient engines. Ah, yes, engines. This is the eternal question because this is, uh, we, we have lots of coffee discussions in the commission on this because if we were to take our climate goals perfectly serious, we would change every single engine in the fisheries fleet. Huh? Uh, but at the other side, it has a price because if you increase the engines, I go back to what I said before, a newer engine, a more efficient engine means you can fish faster, much more efficient, you can get to your fishing grounds much more, uh, your costs are less, et cetera, et cetera. So here, it's a bit of a, you know, balance between your sustainability goals. Are we going to prime, you know, is the priority going to be our climate sustainability goals, our emissions sustainability goals, or is it going to be our, you know, uh, fisheries uh, sustainability goals? So it's a difficult, difficult um, uh, choice to make. What we have said in our proposal is that for us, changing the engines is not a problem. We, we, we fully support that, but we put it in for the small scale and fisheries fleet, because we know that the small scale fisheries fleet, there's a lot more vessels, you know, more than 75%. Um, their access to, to finance and access to credit is much more difficult. So we believe it makes sense for the small scale fleet to change its engine, but for the larger scale fleet, we think that it goes back to the investments in health and safety and in modernizing the vessel. We think there is sufficient profitability in the sector for them to change the, the engines them, themselves. And it's something that the co-legislators don't necessarily agree with. Um, but on the other hand, we think it's an operating cost. It's a basic operating cost of, of a fishing vessel. So why should we, um, um, you know, why should European money be used to change the engines of, of, of fishing vessels? Uh, Ignacio, I see you have another question on the WTO process. Just um, before, sorry, just before you start, Vitsana again, yeah. I think you have done an amazing job uh, answering all of these questions. I'm, ah, I'm okay. No, no, no. But we're running out of time. Yes, yes. I just wanted to let you know that this one from Ignacio, and I think that nobody else as table any question i think this one will, is going to be the last one um so please proceed elisa thank you okay <laughs> sorry folks i didn't realize i'd been taking up so much time no no it's great i think i think it has been great honestly <laughs> <laughs> all right okay ignacio uh last question uh, da, 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 uh when this harmful sub as to the start so uh, Uh, no, I don't think I, I don't think this is I don't agree with you. I don't think this would allow for harmful subsidies because it depends how you how you define harmful subsidies. And don't ask me to define harmful subsidies because the WTO people want us to define harmful subsidies, and we're not going to define what a what a harmful subsidy is. Is a subsidy harmful if it contributes uh, if the stock is managed sustainably? No because this is the point that we have a CFP, which dictates that all stocks should be fished at levels corresponding to maximum sustainable yield. And what we've said in our funding in, with the EMFF is that we don't want the money to go to those fisheries which are contributing, where, where fisheries are not being fished sustainably. So we don't want to give, uh, money for engines or for um, uh, temporary cessation or those things where they're not being fished uh, sustainably. And that's, that's the point. So it's not by giving subsidies uh, that, uh, you know, 
that, that you're making it harmful. I, if you want, we can exchange on this by email. I'm quite happy to, to do this because it's, it, 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 it's the strange WTO wording that makes it difficult. But here, really, the principle is that we feel that the stock, that the, the list of investments that we have in the green box are, are uh, positive investments. They are investments that are, um, you know, designed to help uh, fisheries be sustainable. Um, and this is why we have the, the text that we do. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Sorry, I've spoken a long time. It has been amazing, I think. Um, everyone, thank you so much for your answers. I think I, I'm, I'm very glad that all of them got to, got to be uh, answered. Um, yeah, and uh, questions, but there was no time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think, like Ignacio, we can we can always uh, continue this conversation yeah. by email. And I think, as everybody, honestly, that is present in this in this webinar. So, just to close, uh, I wanted to thank you, Elisa, so very much for being available in these difficult times. I know that you have been. You must be with work, and I don't know a lot of work. And um, I just want, wanted to say thank you. This was a very good opportunity. We had 65 people, which is quite good, I think. Um, uh, the, the, this, this webinar was recorded, and I think that we are going to be able to share it, maybe not tomorrow, but the day after. Um, I just wanted to check with you, Elise, if that's okay that we share your presentation, your PowerPoint presentation. Would that no be okay? No problem, no problem. Okay. Um, I think I think you 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 were really good at answering all of the questions like um, really really fast, um, and um, just wanted to let you know that this this series of webinars are going is going to happen in the next I would say six to seven weeks on Wednesdays at the same time. Uh, next week we are going to have Francisco Guerreiro, which is a Portuguese MEP. Um, and he's also part, uh, he's, he's in the, um, the, the Fisheries Committee in European Parliament also. Um, all of you, all the participants, if, if you want to take part in that webinar and the other ones, the future ones, you can always send us an email just like you did for this one. So just send us an email flagging your interest. And um, I think that's it. I don't know, Anne, if you want to add anything else, I that's think... It just uh, announcing the next one, the next seminar. Thank you everyone that was uh, participating and being very interested and uh, uh, doing all the questions. It was very informative session, Elisa. It was uh, really great. <laughs> very juicy, very yeah. yeah. Well, it's my first time on Zoom, so I feel quite, uh, I feel very modern and very... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's quite strange for all of us. Anyone except for the two Annas. Yeah, we try to be nice. <laughs> I think I think that this is going to be our future in the next yeah. months or months or, or two. So <laughs> yeah. okay, to have to, to, to adapt to it. So thank you very much, Elisa. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Okay. Thanks, bye -bye. everybody. Thanks. Bye. Take bye. care. Stay safe, everyone. Okay. Yeah, you too. Bye. Thanks. Bye. bye. bye, -bye.